NBC News. This is Sunday Today with Garrick Upley and Mary Alice Williams. Good morning and welcome once again. It is indeed a glorious day in our nation's capital. We hope it's the same wherever you are this morning. The first official weekend of summer and chances are you're either preparing for or recovering from a wedding day. This is the biggest <laughs> wedding weekend in America annually. It's also the wind-up of the commencement exercises for the class of 1990. A good weekend for all, right, Al? Well, I think a lot of people in the West will be singing Martha Reeves and the Vandellas' Heat Wave. Mm -hmm. No, when don't, 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 don't. <laughs> B flat. This morning, some people we think you should meet. They are people with a mission, people with a passion, people who struggle and fight the good fight. For example, two women who have been adversaries for more than a decade, their battleground, an abortion clinic. We'll also meet people who are involved in the gay lifestyle. Some are participants, some are trying to cope with it in this age of AIDS. As you know, there's been a major AIDS convention in San Francisco this week. We'll hear about that, and we'll hear from the Gay Men's Chorus of New York. It provides an outlet for talented gays and a social base as well. The chorus is flourishing. Gay Pride Week concludes today, and that is our cover story this week. The AIDS conference in San Francisco took an unusual air of unity yesterday between the scientists inside and the protesters outside. NBC News science correspondent Robert Bizell has details. The character of the conference changed dramatically when hundreds of scientists and healthcare workers, led by the conference chairman, walked outside to join protesters who were demanding more money for AIDS research. This moment on Saturday ended the tension between those outside who had been protesting for several days and the delegates who had come to hear the latest scientific studies pertaining to the AIDS epidemic. But the delegates also heard descriptions of the challenges that remain. For no other disease or epidemic in the world's history has challenged the status quo as AIDS has done. Never before, even in the time of the great European plagues, has a health problem catalyzed such a broad rethinking of the health of individuals and society. While the delegates and protesters can agree about the need for more money for AIDS research, there is still a lot of anger about U.S. policies on AIDS. That could surface later today when Health and Human Services Secretary Louis Sullivan addresses the conference. Robert Bazell, NBC News, San Francisco. A University of California poll found that many doctors-to-be do not want to treat AIDS patients. About two-thirds of those surveyed also said they worried about the risk of contracting the AIDS virus as a consequence of treating patients suffering from the disease. Today is the culmination of Gay Pride Week in Boise, Idaho. The first ever gay and lesbian parade in the state of Idaho took place Saturday. Freedom parades, marches, and rallies are being held across the country to call for more aggressive research into AIDS and to call attention to the increase in violence against homosexuals. This uh, past week, AIDS has been in the news once again, as we just saw in the news. A major international conference is being held in San Francisco, and what can be and is being done to fight it. Some progress is being made, but so far, no cures. Which leaves those who suffer from this affliction in desperate need of human support and comfort. Homosexuals are prime victims of AIDS, and what we offer you now is a look into one part of their world. A group in New York City which has found support and release in singing the Gay Men's Chorus. Cassandra Clayton tells us about them. We're gay men and we sing, and I hope we sing well, and that's it. We're not any different than you or, or anyone else. We're not freaks of nature. In fact, they are fathers and grandfathers, doctors, lawyers, architects, teachers, and a couple of hairdressers. But it has been a bumpy ride these 10 years of the Gay Men's Chorus, 10 years that parallel the gay pride movement itself, the tremendous gains and the wrenching losses. This concert marks the milestone. Gary Miller has been musical director since the chorus's first year, 1980, when they started with 17 gay men. I remember walking in as a, uh, as a first tenor and thinking, 
this this is heaven. This is this is the two things I love most. This I I love to sing and I love to be with gay men, and this filled the bill right uh, right from the very start. How am I doing? They've come a long way. Now they are 130 singers, an extended family in spirit and in song. Wardrobe, wardrobe. But their triumphs are tempered by lingering discrimination against gays. Even on this night of celebration, some members asked not to be photographed. You know, you could be arrested for this in a couple of days. Still, the chorus has earned critical acclaim and a loyal following. Every year, they play Carnegie Hall every year to sell out crowds. You try to make a political statement with your music. The political statement that we make is seeing our name on the marquee of Carnegie Hall. When you walk by there as an unsuspecting tourist or New Yorker and you see appearing New York City Gay Men's Chorus, that's an incredible incredible political statement. I don't think anything else has to be said. So we don't, we don't sing political songs. The, the statement's already made, uh, and then we can get on with the music. Jay Lessiger joined the chorus 10 years ago and found love for another man and for himself. I was pretty uptight about going out on stage and identifying myself to, you know, to God and country as a gay man. Uh, I was pretty closeted. Uh, and it was partly the chorus and partly meeting somebody like Shelley Post, who was so out and so open, um, that allowed me to say, I guess this is okay. Shelley Post was Jay's lover for seven years till he died of AIDS two and a half years ago. I got a tremendous amount of support from the chorus when Shelley became ill. The chorus is really rather magnificent, to put it mildly. The AIDS crisis is a fact of life for gay men and for the gay men's chorus. You know, it's just so hard to remember life before AIDS. I mean, it's just been, it's just been so devastating. We've lost 26 men in eight years' time. There was one week we had three chorus members die in seven days. Um, the hardest thing that I have to do uh, is get up in front of that chorus and announce that we've lost another member. Two weeks ago, this memorial service for chorus member Jay Farrar. Music and memories, like the night of a chorus Halloween party. Finally, we were all ready to leave the apartment when Jay had an anxiety attack about walking the streets in a dress. Convinced that all would go well, we no sooner started walking up 7th Avenue when two women approached our entourage. One said to the other, I wonder where she got that dress. It sure is cute. <laughs> but after the laughter, the loss looms large. Yet another friend is buried. Still, their music is a constant, the words and melody a solace. It has become a part of their healing. I guess in some ways it's a catharsis, even in, let's say, a regular concert where we're singing about loss. You can't help but think about your loved ones, your friends, the people that have died over the past five, six, seven years and all the people that you know who are not well today and, and may not be there tomorrow. With every concert, we look around and realize that some members have moved on. 
Marty Christian is chairman of the chorus. Marty, how many men in the chorus are HIV positive? It's really hard to say. Uh, it's not a question that we ask. We just know that there are a number of them. Too many. Marty himself tested positive for the AIDS virus two years ago. But he is more concerned for others than for himself. At a recent concert, a guy very near to me just suddenly couldn't stand him. And people had to, to just hold him up so that he could get through. It comes with the territory now. sing and I can't tell they can't anymore and um, it's it's a pretty courageous thing to see for all the gay community this chorus is a symbol of survival the chorus is all about life it's about getting on with the business of living and that's real important when you're constantly surrounded by dying Sunday today, Cassandra Clayton, NBC News, New York.